वेलकम टू बुनियाद पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर मोनिका नागपाल वी डिड नॉट इनहेरिट दिस वर्ल्ड लाइक दिस देन हाउ कैन वी गिव दिस टू आर नेक्स्ट जनरेशन इन दिस फॉर्म we need to reflect mindfully on our core values and make conscious efforts towards protecting the planet and also achieve all sustainable development goals with buniyad i monica nagpal will bring to fore sustainability champions who are striving to bring back harmony with the nature and also dignity of each life namaskar dosto today again we are here with yet another episode of buniyad laying the foundation for sustainable living and today we have a guest who is showing the way that is what her introduction could be welcome dr sarika namaste thank you so much for this invitation so dr sarika is the founder of raha foundation so that is i was telling you she is showing the way all through So I will request Dr. Sarika to please introduce herself now. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, and congratulations for this amazing podcast that you are doing, where you are talking about sustainability and inviting people who are trying to do something in the field, because absolutely need of the hour. So yeah, to introduce myself, uh, I'm the co-founder of Ra Foundation. We are a Mumbai headquartered organization, but working in the Western uh, Ghats. or the northern western ghats of the sayadri mountain range we work with the indigenous communities and uh, we work at the nexus of planet and people mm-hmm. uh, but before that this is my third career just to introduce myself very briefly i started i have a doctorate in management and i started my career as a faculty with uh, some of the leading business schools in uh, mumbai like bajaj jbims or sp jain i was always yearning to become an entrepreneur and i got a chance when i was on my maternity leave so subsequently i quit my job became a full time entrepreneur i started an ites business but soon the uh, development sector enticed me it kind of i felt very attracted to do something in the development sector and uh, i then uh, quit my uh, i sold my business i had a very successful exit and then started ra foundation so uh, essentially idea was that how do we use your professional background and your um, entrepreneurship skill to make a scalable difference in the d- development sector uh, so that was the whole uh, uh, objective or uh, purpose with which we really started and uh, to quickly talk about ra we work on five uh, verticals um, uh, water is uh, a very large vertical that we have because water underpins all social problems and water okay. actually creates this vicious intertwined cycle of poverty and deprivation mm-hmm. so water uh, becomes our very very large core area where we work we also got uh, united nations accreditation for our work on water uh, last year we then other verticals are um, on rejuvenating planet where we are converting all the barren land in the uh, forest corridor of uh, western ghats into carbon sink or into uh, green oasis and we do this with in a very integrated manner by working closely with the government and the forest department and the community most importantly uh and then we have program on people where we work uh, with small and marginal farmers on climate smart agriculture we work with women on livelihoods and we work with youth on employment oriented skill training um it's been a phenomenal ra so far and uh, we are now at a stage where um, our our programs have become a model which are not only um, uh, scalable but importantly replicable and extremely sustainable absolutely so that's about me superb superb and i'm feeling so overwhelmed like how can just one idea from one person uh, can become so big you know that is what is possible for this is possible for each one of us mm-hmm. when it is possible for dr sarika it is possible for each one of us but only thing is that you have to have that one idea and that idea oh. is uh, how do i serve no how do i serve what do i give back how do i give back to the society and this is what makes all the difference so uh, i'm sure this was the idea and if there was something else so that is the next question that how did you stumble upon sustainability like 
why did you want to sell off your uh, very wonderful business that you were already having and you wanted to come into this development circle uh, sector or probably what we call now a social entrepreneur, even if you wanted to be an entrepreneur, but to be a social entrepreneur is what a lot of uh, youth will not go into that because they say there's no money and why should we invest so much of energy and just go in that path. But you chose a path and you made a rah for all of us. Please tell us that. Yeah, so uh, I think always, you know, there are points of your in your life when uh, you think that um, it's not only about money. You know, it, there is uh, a lot beyond money. And uh, especially when you come from a privileged background, you are always conscious that your privilege, uh, God has given you that privilege not to kind of live a very luxurious life, but so that you are able to impact whatever number. I mean, it's not about scale at all. It's Absolutely. whatever small number you can touch uh, the, their lives. You know, it's uh, I think the privilege is because uh, God wants you to touch those un un underprivileged people and change their course of life. So, you know, I was always conscious of the fact and somewhere I was also little embarrassed about my privilege, I would say. And I think that was also because of the upbringing, you know, I mean, when uh, uh, we were brought up, you know, it was always, uh, and I always I came from a very privileged background. So it was always told us that this is something that you have to give back. It is mm -hmm. not for you to consume. I mean, this is yeah. not consumption. Yeah. It's all not about consumption. It's about giving right. back. So right. that, uh, and I always felt uh, when I was running that business, making so much money that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, I still have unfulfilled uh, desires. And then, uh, you know, there's, there's a point of life, it comes when you realize that if I don't do it now, when I'm when am I going to do it? So right. I think that was the kind of trigger that was a starting point. And then but what to do? That was a big question that I definitely want to do something in the development sector, I want to give use my skills, use my potential to make a sustainable difference. I am absolutely passionate about this sector. But karna kya hai aur kaise karna hai? Are two <laughs> seriously unanswered questions, right? And I think yeah, yeah. people stop there because they don't know what to do and how to go about it. Absolutely. So I think there are lots of ways. In our case, what we did was because we had a very successful exit, we decided to fund solutions that hmm. can solve some of these intertwined um, uh, social problems. Uh, which uh, are actually creating those vicious cycle of poverty and deprivation. So the first uh, Ra Foundation has had a very interesting journey. The first mm. years we self-incubated, I traveled across India. I learned from uh, masters. I learned from experts who are in the space, you know, how this sector really works, how these programs are implemented, how do you work with the, how do you take that bottom-up approach, which is, which is very critical. How do mm. you uh, uh, implement a community-centric program, so all of that I learned uh, from a lot of experts, from, you know, veterans in the field. And then the first five years, we became a, a funding organization where we started funding solutions. Okay. And uh, the programs were implemented by small uh, other small organizations. And we were like working closely with them, funding solutions. And once we had like some solutions and more clarity, we then realized that now these programs need to be implemented at absolute scale. So mm -hmm. then we kind of uh, segued into being a uh, operating organization or a grassroots level implementation organization 2019 onwards. So last five years, we have been um, implementing programs directly. And we have, of course, partnered with a lot of organizations. And it has been a phenomenal journey. And this actually segueing into being an operating organization has really helped us scale up the solutions because now we can also go to other organizations and funders and ask for uh, grants matching grants and things like that because um, you know once you're connected with the grassroots it becomes a little easier for you to raise funds absolutely absolutely yeah we can uh, and what i want to share here from what i've heard just now from you is that first is that it is your values so it, she is uh, saying about coming from a privileged background uh, I also say people who are not even who have a privileged background, but that values, no, the values is the real treasure. Uh, even if you are from a privileged background or from a, you are a humble background, but if you have those values, those are the real treasures which you really want to give back, which help you to really have that uh, determination or wish to give back to the society. And the second is to learn, to keep on learning. That is what she was telling about To She went all out to learn the skills uh, from the veterans, from the masters, from the mentors. So never ever have that kind of a kind of sometimes we have that arrogance attitude that I have the 
uh, I have the mindset, I have the money and I have everything so I can do it. But no, we really need to learn the intricacies of whatever uh, business or whatever venture we want to enter. We need to learn. So these are the takeaways from whatever we just spoke about uh, with Dr. Sarika. So yeah, uh, this is uh, actually a very phenomenal journey, which she said, and it was such a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, methodology, which I can say that she first funded. And then when she uh, got a hold on everything, and then she wanted to become an operational organization. So now that you have become such a big organization, how are you creating and where are you creating the actual impact? Please share that with us. Sure. So I think one of the biggest impact for me is, um, so, uh, you know, it's very difficult to say that which is a, which, which impact is more closer to your heart. You know, planet is very important, but people is also equally important. So I would say, uh, but the people impact really proceeds the planet impact. You know, once, because I would say, once water is available, once you have forest-based livelihood opportunities and things like that, uh, there are lots of reasons for uh, uh, people to really, you know, lots of these livelihood opportunities are based on nature. They are all nature-based, like agriculture. Or even women livelihood, I would say, is based on nature. Because if there is no water, women spend so much time fetching water yes, that yeah. there's no time left for any economic activity. So, uh, so, you know, so first step is really to implement those planet programs, which are primarily water and forestation, afforestation. And once that happens, then we work with uh, uh, farmers, we work with uh, women. We work with youth and uh, it's it's so nice to see uh, farmers stopping migrating to urban areas to work as a casual labor and mm -hmm. staying back in their own villages. Women spending more and more time with children because now she doesn't have to work for water and either she's earning an income or she's spending time with children and giving time to children and ensuring nurturing children better. And, uh, you know, the, and the families living together, practicing their tribal, tribal uh, indigenous culture, which otherwise they never got time to practice, right? right. So, in a way, we are also protecting the cultural heritage of the country. Uh, Absolutely. Because, you know, otherwise, uh, the, we would have lost this indigenous culture, which is so beautiful. And, of course, uh, youth, you know, once they get employed and they, uh, they become role models in their community, they come back to us saying that, you know, I just repaired my house or I just treated my parents. And, uh, you know, my, my sister who had quit education, looking at me, she has started to study back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I think all of these are very, very amazing uh, experiences that that's part of our daily life. You know, mm -hmm. every day we get uh, such experiences, such beautiful experiences. And um, yeah, so I think it's worth the journey. The Ra has been really worth it. And but we still feel that we have barely scratched the surface, although we have impacted more than 60,000 people on with water, 110 villages, 22,500 farmers stopped migrating, 2,000 women have started a small micro business, multiple youth, more than 1,000 youth have found employment in, uh, you know, uh, different organizations, 600 acres completely restored with 100,000 saplings, 1,000 acres on the way in this particular year. So but we still think there is so much work to do. So, you know, so. absolutely, absolutely. So what she's talking about is her impact through just water, when we are saving water and also planting trees. So two or three SDGs are getting covered here. The uh, plant, it is on life on land, life on water, in water, everything is covered here. But how those are impacting the people uh, who are living besides there. Uh, the women, uh, especially, are getting time because those are the women who have gone long ways to just fetch water. They quit school. Uh, they quit everything just to fetch water. So their health is uh, restored back uh, because they are not getting uh, uh, tired because of just getting uh, water from one place to another. So that is a great and huge impact, I must say. And which is the place, please give us little more details about the place where you are uh, creating all of this. Yeah, so we work in uh, uh, the western part of India in Maharashtra. We started with Palghar, which is a, a very tribal dominated uh, district of Maharashtra. And then we moved through adjacency. So once we learned how to work in Palghar, once we learned the hydrogeology of the area, the cultural aspects of the people, then we moved to the next district, which is Nasik. 
Then mm-hmm. we moved to the adjacent district, which is Raigad. And then now we just moved to Nagar, which is again the adjacent district. So what mm-hmm. we are essentially doing is we have no ambition to be all India NGO, all India organization. We want to go deeper rather than going wider. We want to make a sustainable difference rather than say that we work in so many states and so many districts because there are lots of amazing organizations Absolutely. working all over India. You don't need to be everywhere. You know. Right. And I think our model works extremely well in this part because it also integrates a lot of hydrogeological factors. It integrates a lot of climatic factors into the model and cultural aspects of the model. So, uh, you know, so I think we we are absolutely well, um, uh, well placed to really scale up the model in those areas. So we are essentially working in the northern western ghats, which is uh, Palghar, Nasik and that northern part of Maharashtra. Absolutely. So again, two things are very beautifully which are coming out here is that we don't want to go wider. We are wanting to go deeper. So how deep can you go in one's, uh, one in your own place where you are? No, that is important. Yeah. Just thinking because as we always you know, you, you work locally and then only you can think globally. Yeah. So SDGs are the global goals. No, there are sustainable development goals for the whole world. But unless we are working towards them in our own local places, wherever we are, even if you are starting with your own house, saving water in your own house is the starting point. If you are letting loose water in your own house and you're wanting to save water for the people around you, what's the use? Yeah. So wherever you are, we can start there. And that is where we will come to the next question about, about the how the practical applications can be uh, more important because still... Uh, any person who will be listening to this podcast will be really applauding you and uh, will be really overwhelmed by how you are doing so much of work, how your organization is really working towards uh, sustainable uh, goals in the area where you are doing. But what can I do? That will be the question again. What can I do and how do I contribute in this? So please tell us uh, that that to one that lay person uh, how they can contribute. Yeah. So, you know, there actually the problems are so severe that there's uh, everything, you know, there's something for everybody. I I personally feel that, you know, and uh, when I say something for everybody, I don't even mean um, uh, talent, skill, privilege, not privilege, whatever, humble background and time. There's everything. Even if you can spend one hour a week, Mm -hmm. there's so much you can contribute. I mean, if you can spend more hours, then nothing like that. So I think we are constantly, you know, organizations like ours are constantly looking for volunteers who can work with us on the field, who can work off the field, who can be remote, who can help us with ideation, who can help us with, you know, so multiple different ways. There's so much work to do, honestly, that, uh, uh, you know, we are, and we are absolutely, so we have had um, young uh, volunteers from 14 years of age to uh, to almost uh, 72 years of age so we have uh-huh. <laughs> we deal with that uh, range you know i mean of course 14 years of age brings a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy to the table 72 years of age brings a lot of wisdom to the table so, yeah experience uh, both the groups are so valuable so valuable <laughs> superb 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 so how do the volunteers can approach uh, you have a website and they can approach you th- through yeah, the website yeah. also they can just shoot a mail to info at ra foundation.org uh, and uh, we are not too bad in replying I mean our response rate is uh, quite decent I would say so yeah and just say volunteering opportunity seeking volunteering opportunities and we we talk to every single person we reply to every single mail uh, extremely happy to get uh, you know people expressing their interest uh, in uh, getting in touch with us so yeah and also uh, a, a, any organizations who would like to replicate the model she is also open for that when I would have us an int- uh, intro for with her then she said that though she is not wanting to go wider because she is very happy working where she is but if she can always uh, the exchange of knowledge is what is very important nowadays no we unless we are able to exchange knowledge the other person wastes so much of time doing the same exercise again and again which she would have already done so if we are able to uh, exchange or change or take away little knowledge from here and we can just share that knowledge and we can help somebody else to do the same kind of a work in some other state of the country, I think that also is a very good idea. Absolutely. You know, I mean, happy to share everything about how, see, 
our journey while it looks awesome i mean we have also had our challenges we have had our failures we have had uh, you know several situations where we were like very scared uh, ki kya hoga aage so, so we have got uh, that cycle one or two uh, places where you had uh, you had mentioned when we were having an intro that where uh, how did you uh, overcome certain challenges please tell the audience how you had uh, certain uh, challenges in your journey yeah so for example you know initially how did we stumble on water we actually began with livelihoods without actually uh, looking at uh, the whole ecosystem how it works and things like that we started with livelihood but our livelihood program was a huge failure because um, as i just mentioned that um, uh, we started with women and women were so and as the time progressed and as the water scarcity started looming large women started spending more and more time on fetching water this aspect was not uh, considered when we designed a program on livelihood and then we realized that the absenteeism in our livelihood program is so big and we just didn't understand that why this was happening and when we did the research we realized that uh, water underpins all social problem and water is the basic necessity of human beings i mean women would spend time on bringing water or on livelihood so obviously on water no yes. i mean it's a no brainer right yeah. so i think that was a big lesson for us that there are lots of these intertwined problems and unless we go to the root you know there are lots of root causes of what we see is very different than what uh, is actually the root cause so right. it's important right. to go you know go to that uh, deeper level and understand what uh, what causes the root cause and things like that so there have been multiple such uh, episodes uh, where we have uh, you know learned uh, the hard way and uh, i would love to share everything because uh, why should anybody go through the same cycle again i mean you make new mistakes and tell me what mistakes you have made rather yeah. than you know <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i will also uh, give a small uh, question here regarding the support that you have got from your family uh, a small uh, uh, anything you would like to share yeah. there ah, yeah, yeah absolutely so my co-founder is my husband uh, girish and together actually we are on this ra uh, you know sustainable ra so he also comes from a very uh, interesting background he is an engineer from iit bombay and mba from iim ahmedabad and has been a very successful investment uh, banker all his life and he spends about 25 30% of his time on ra foundation activities and brings those strong technical skills to the platform uh, and of course i have spent 100% of my time and um, my daughter our daughter actually she is very inspired by the work uh, she's been seeing us do this work from the beginning so she decided to actually become a sustainability engineer so she is wow. a sustainability engineer and she has worked extensively in the field of uh, uh, sustainable buildings or energy and uh, uh, writing policies at the government level on uh, electric vehicle policy was some of the policies were written by her so she has been doing a lot of interesting work in this space so yeah it has been you know so family uh, uh, obviously it's very very important that family is involved in yes. uh, everything that you do because it, and also she comes out with a lot of interesting ideas our son also comes out with some very interesting ideas so you know entire family is actually on this ra <laughs> wonderful that's so wonderful so it is so important that you have supporters because then you don't have to fight here and then then go out and fight the problems in the world absolutely, no absolutely. it is so easy it becomes easier for you to have one aspect of your life taken care of and then you can do whatever you want in the other aspect of your life absolutely. so uh, it is so wonderful the way you have uh, brought about this ra foundation and it is now a full blown Uh, it is now on a youth stage i can say it has already become a youth and we can see how the youth will going to really impact the world so one last message dr sarika for the audience yeah so i think uh, there's lots uh, this world is beautiful but there are lots of challenges also and if all of us uh, contribute to solving you know or working on one challenge i think this uh, world and this country can become really really beautiful and i am very keen that we leave this world as beautiful as we got it you know for our next generation so that uh, and i feel very sad that uh, our generation has really spoiled a lot of things i feel very guilty <laughs> about it but we still have time to undo a lot of bad things that we have done but all of us need to you know absolutely keep sustainability goal as a number one goal in life whether you are directly contributing to that or whether you are le leading a sustainable life there are multiple ways in which you can contribute to this i think just be conscious and do it absolutely we have to be very conscious and mindful 
living a mindful life is actually living a very sustainable life. That is what I believe as a mindfulness coach. I can always say that me coming into this field of sustainability was also a byproduct because I was being very mindful and I thought being sustainable uh, is very, very mindful. So thank you so much, Dr. Sarika. It was really wonderful. And somebody who is listening to this episode here today will uh, know that we are working here for awareness. So if you have a story uh, which can really inspire somebody here, please, uh, you can DM me and I will contact you and you can be the, my next guest here and we can continue to have this ripple effect going on and we can spread the message of sustainability to more and more people. So thank you so much, Dr. Sarika. It was really wonderful. Thank you. All the best. Namaste. Mm -hmm.